We've seen how corporate support for people who identify as LGBTQ has improved over the past few decades, but a recent survey finds that the community still faces significant discrimination in the workplace. In today's Bloomberg Equality, I spoke to Rita Mitjohns, Chief Diversity Officer at ADP, about how employers can foster a more inclusive work environment. Well, I think it first, first of all, starts with commitment from the senior leadership from the very top. I mean, I think our, our CEO and many of our, you know, sort of business leaders are actively talking about the importance of inclusion and the importance of diversity in, to our business. So the first step is obviously visibility around senior leadership and the actual discussion of LGBTQ issues um, on those topics. And one of the concrete examples is, um, for example, ADP signed on to the Human Rights Campaign uh, Equality Pledge, which again basically has has some concrete commitments that companies have to make to really foster an LGBTQ friendly environment. So that's one example. Uh, another example is fostering uh, employee resource groups. So at ADP, we have ADP Pride. Uh, we have thousands of associates uh, that are members of ADP Pride, approximately 4,000, I, I believe. Now, 50% of those associates are allies. Mm -hmm. So that's a wonderful opportunity to really inform and get the rest of the community aware of some of the LGBTQ issues and supporting those issues. So it's not just for the out community, it's also for other associates who are also supportive of that environment. What specific policies can companies adopt to support their LGBTQ employees and allay that concern that being out hurts their prospects? No, that's a great question. So I would say it starts with the benefit plans so companies you know offering transgender benefits offering uh, benefits uh, for example for same-sex and domestic partners uh, not just marital partners because even though we have the De Defense of Marriage Act was passed and now gay people can get married and get those same benefits what happens is not every gay couple wants to get married right so if you only offer those benefits to married couples well then you're excluding a good portion of the LGBT community as a result so what we did is we changed our benefit plan to basically read all domestic partners so it's very inclusive uh, so I would say the benefits plans is, is for sure I would say in terms of your recruiting policies you know partnering with organizations that target the LGBT community like out and equal for example mm -hmm. so those are all examples of uh, you know whether it's recruiting whether it's your benefit policies um, concrete ways that human resources can actually um, develop plans to support that. Should there be quotas in terms of making sure that you have a, a certain percentage of candidates from certain populations? Is that a good idea overall? Yeah, we don't think of it as quotas. I mean, I, I don't think you can force these things. I think it's important. That they have to be organic, right? Um, I think sending the signal that you are open and you have an inclusive culture and that you value uh, the, the right qualifications, the right experience, regardless of where you come from, that's what's really important mm -hmm. uh, because you want the best talent um, in every situation. It's really good for the associate, it's also good for the company. The economy, as we know, is doing very well right now. It's been doing well for a long time, but the job market in particular is very strong. My question is what happens when the tide turns, when um, job gains are no longer as plentiful and companies need to start looking at their cross structure a lot more carefully? Does diversity end up taking a back seat? Well, I think the forward-thinking companies would tell you no, uh, and the reason for that is because you know we all live in business cycles, right? And we have to think about the long term. And part of corporate sustainability is about developing a strategy that actually lets you be around for the long term, and having a solid talent strategy that actually leverages uh, experience and diversity from all backgrounds is critical to success, whether you're in a good market or a bad market. So I think the companies that uh, cut back on those things tend to be a little bit short-sighted. Uh, I think if you integrate uh, your focus on diversity to other parts of your business, whether it be sales growth, whether it be your products, mm -hmm. um, then you don't have to worry about cutting back on those things because mm -hmm. they're already embedded in the way that you go to market.